Hey everyone, Eric with Rockin' H. In this video, I'm going to show you how to add an industrial or herd bumper. That's one of the brands these go by. But this is uh, commonly used on trucks to prevent accidents, I think, primarily with deer. At least out here, we got deer running all over the country and, and they meet up with more than one kind of vehicle. So guys put these on their trucks to reduce insurance premiums. I'm told that it reduces insurance premiums. I'm not sure if that's even true or not. But nevertheless, we're gonna put one on a model because they look cool. That's what we're here to do. First thing we're gonna do is remove the factory front bumper. That's what we have to do on all of these. And this particular bumper, we can add to a truck and the hood will still open. Now this is a truck I've already customized and so uh, you're going to notice that instead of the traditional pins on the hood, there is a whole different style of pin to keep that hood on. And it's not actually a pin, it's a screw. And if you want to learn how to put screws in these hood hinges versus using the factory pin, there's a whole video showing how to do that here on YouTube. So I'm just going to pull these out. There's more than one way to install one of these bumpers. This is one way to do it. This is not the way to do it. One way to go ahead and install a bumper on these trucks is to drill through the die cast holes where those original factory pins go. Put a 16th inch hole through there, all the way through, drill it from both sides, and then you can use a piece of rod. And then what you have to do is line up your hood, your bumper, and then run a rod from one side to the other. That is a way to do it, especially if you don't want to spend money on these screws. Now these are not expensive, but you do need an Allen wrench and you know, you'll need that all to make it work. So if you're going to do it the way I'm doing it, here's what you're going to do. And then also I might preface one other thing, depending on the size of rod you use, you might need to make this hole bigger. If you choose to use a bit, I suggest only using it by hand or use a pin vise or something. Because this bit is cutting, you're creating, you know, it's biting. You can, if you get too aggressive with it, break this arm off and then you've got a mess. You'll have to glue it back on. And that works, that's fine, but just be aware, uh, it's better if you don't break it. So the only time I suggest using a drill bit is if you use it by hand. And it is soft enough that you can get through this relatively quick, as you see. And there our hole will accommodate this screw. And if you happen to use a larger rod, uh, that's just bigger than the hole that's in there, again, you'll need to drill that out. Do it only by hand so you don't break these arms off. So we've got that done. Now we can begin lining up our bumper and the holes in the die cast. This is where it gets a little tricky and you wish you had like 22 hands and a friend and a number of other things to make this all work right. This is right here is the trickiest part of the entire process just because there's so many pieces got to line up. All right, one side is in, and we can do the other side. Now 
Now one thing I do like about using screws is you can tighten these up just enough to where you have some friction where that bumper will stay open or if you want to stage it on a layout or something different ways you can do just as I'm uh, as I am here and then kind of open it and it'll stay wherever you put it or if you want to leave it loose that's fine too it's kind of up to you you do not want to tighten them up too much for the same reasons we don't want to use any type of power tool making these holes bigger on the plastic on the resin same thing we don't want to break anything the process is the exact same going from 379 to 389 uh, they're the same thing the arms on the 389 are just a little longer and that's how you're going to add one of these cool bumpers to a Peterbilt of your choice.